Hey everybody, welcome to another CodeZing.org programming lesson. Um, level 2 today. The program is called Can You Find Lemur? You can get the code and an example at CodeZing.org backslash find underscore lemur. We can just navigate through the main website. If you go to CodeZing.org, level 2 code, we'll go to Can You Find Lemur? This is a fun, this is our first kind of real game, I think. I guess we've done like rock, paper, scissors, but this one's a little more advanced. Um, so you have 10 options, 10, I guess, doors you can think of them, and you have to try to guess until you find Lemur. Let's see if we can, where is he? There we go, okay, he was behind door eight. He found Lemur. All right, uh, so every time you play the game, it's gonna reset, it's gonna randomly hide Lemur and you gotta click or guess until until you find him. I gotta like this one. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so we found Lemur a few times. Uh, so let's see how we code that up. So you scroll down to the bottom, you can click on the buttons to get the code. We'll copy this and then open Spider IDE and paste that in. If you don't have Spider or Python, head back to the website and follow the links to get Python installed. So the first step in this program is import random. We've seen this several times in the games, uh, being able to, to select a random item or a random uh, character. So that import statement brings in the random library and adds a lot of functionality to the code. The next three items here is setting up a Python list. You can tell that by the square brackets. This is a Python list. And within the list are the integers from 1 to 10. So each item in the list is separated by a comma. And we have 1 through 10. And that's going to be where we hide Lemur, behind one of those doors. Uh, the next is going to be the placement, which is where Lemur is going to hide. And you can see it's using the random library. And it's going to pick a random integer between 1 and 10. So 1 is the starting random int, and 10 is the last number that it'll choose from. And so it'll pick a placement that's uh, behind one of those doors. The next variable we're setting is game underscore over. And we're setting that equal to false, because at the beginning of the game, our game is not over. So it's false. And that is going to help us track when the game needs to end. And then we're printing to the console the variable placement, which is where he's hidden, and grid. And I think this is, is in here just to show you that it's making a random placement and it's completing the grid. Obviously, you don't want to print out the placement before the, before the game starts. Uh, I think that's just in there from the development piece. But let's, uh, why don't we run it from there. See, so you could say... It picked a placement, a random placement of five, and then printed out the grid, which is a Python list, as we discussed, and then it's going to start the game. Um, so let's just, we'll exit out of that uh, so that we can talk through the other parts first. So this is a new piece of code that we haven't seen yet, and it's a while loop. So while game over is equal to false, uh, that a, col a colon, and it's going to loop over and over and over. It's going to do the same set of instructions over and over and over until game over is not equal to false. So it's uh, until it's equal to something else. So uh, as I mentioned in previous ones, this double equal sign is to check whether something is true. A single equal sign is to set a variable equal to something. So this is to check does game over equal false is the two equal signs. So within the while loop, all of this stuff that's tabbed over, that's one tab in from the while loop, is what it's going to run while game over equals false. So the first step is to get the guess from the user, and we have input, um, as we've seen in lots of the games. It's going to print this text to the screen, guess where it is hidden, and whatever the user inputs is going to be equal to the variable guess. The next step 
is going to be within this try and accept bracket. So we have try up here and accept down here. So if we look one, one tab over from while, we have try and accept. The purpose of try and accept is to have the code try to run a particular set of instructions. And if for any reason that fails, then it's going to run this accept piece. So try try to do this code, and if you can't, if it fails for some reason, then do this. So once we get the guess from the user, it's going to try to set the guess equal to an integer. Uh, as we've seen before, the input comes back as a text string, and we need it to be an integer so we could so we could do the the checking and our list is integers. You can see these don't have quotes around them, so each one of these in the grid is an integer. So we want our guess to be an integer too. Sometimes you've seen where you can just put the int around the input, and that's fine. You could try to do that. Um, either way, it'll set guess to int to an integer, uh, but we'll just put it back to how it was. So guess is turning guess into integer. So now guess is not a string, it's an integer. Um, and the following step is where we test whether that guess was correct or not. So the first step is if guess is not in the range 1 to, this is actually 10 because it um, in these range items it goes up to but not including the last number. So 1 up to 11 but not including 11 which is 10. So a little bit a little bit tricky. Um, there, but so this is testing if the guess is not between 1 and 10, then print out your guess must be between 1 and 10, and you entered a particular guess, whatever the guess was. So if they guess 15 or 20 or 50 or 100, um, it gives them a warning that their guess was not valid, that we're only looking from 1 to 10. The next section says if the guess is equal to placement, so if the user's guess is equal to placement, and remember placement is set up here, it's the random place where lemur is hiding in the grid. If the guess equals placement, then the first thing it's doing is setting game over to true, because once they make the correct guess, game over is true, and we want this loop to stop. So we're setting game over to true, and we're going to print you found it, letting them know that, that they won. This is new. Uh, that we haven't seen before, and it's an L if. So we have if guest is not in the range, in the range between one and ten, tell them that they put in the wrong guess. If it's equal to the placement, then they won. But let's say they make a guess, and it's um, if they make a guess and it's within the range, but it's not the correct guess. What we want to do is change the grid so that instead of a number, we replace it with an X so they know they've already guessed, and then print out, no, it's not there, guess again. And then it's going to print the grid so they can see um, see the grid of where they've tried to guess in the past. And then it's going to come to the end of the code. So if that runs correctly, um, they enter a guess, it's within the range but not equal to the placement, that it will run um, this piece, it will set the set the location of the grid to X, it'll print it's not there, and it'll print the grid, and then it will start all the way back over because game over is still equal to false. The only way game over becomes true is if they're correct, they make a correct guess. So while game over is false, this will keep looping through and through so they can keep guessing and guessing and guessing until their guess equals the placement, and then it'll set game over to true and this loop will stop. If for any reason the guessing piece, this section of code fails to run. I'm trying to think of a reason. Maybe if they guessed a letter instead of a number, uh, then this piece this piece of code wouldn't be happy. And it will say, you must guess a number between 1 and 10. Um, you entered, and it'll tell you what you entered. Um, but also note that this, by putting this try and accept in here, it allows somebody to enter a ridiculous guess, and it doesn't collapse, it doesn't make the entire game break it will just loop back again and try to start from the beginning. 
right? Because this doesn't say then game over equals true, which would stop the loop. It lets it keep looping. So let's let's fool around and see if we can uh, try all of those different um, scenarios. So like I said, this is printing out from the beginning. Normally you wouldn't print it, but let's this way we know where the actual correct guess is. So first let's do the correct guess. So we know it's hidden in nine. Let's guess nine. Now we can see you found it. Right, so our guess was equal to placement. So game over equals true and print you found it, which is exactly what happened. You can see the code stopped. Right, it didn't continue running the code. It's ready for the next, the next um, set of instructions. So the game stopped. Let's try. What is this top bar? If guess is not in range one to eleven, so let's guess ninety nine. If we guess ninety nine, it does exactly this. Your guess must be between one and ten. You entered ninety nine. So if guess is not in range 1 through 10, then print your guess must be between 1 and 10, which it did, and print you entered, comma, and guess. So it's printing out the text string, and then the comma separates this variable that we want to print, which is guess, which is what the user entered. Right, You entered 99, but it must be between 1 and 10. And you can see it's ready for the next input. It didn't stop the code, because game over is still equal to false. right? This is the only instance where game over equals true when the guess equals placement. Since we didn't run into that, it runs this code, checks this wasn't true, checks this uh, wasn't wasn't right because it's not in the range, and then it's going to loop right back up and start over again. And this is where we're at. It's guess. It's asking us where we guessed again. Let's try. You know, if you did 98, it's going to keep doing that. It's going to say your guess must be between one and ten. You entered 98. Right. If you do 55 or negative 5, it's going to keep telling you this is going to keep happening because happening because the guess is not in this range. So let's make a correct guess in the range that's not equal to the value 5, because 5 is where the, the guy is hidden. So let's say we guess 1. If we guess 1, we end up in this section of the code, right, where the guess um, is in the range between 1 and 10, so it's not going to run that. The guess wasn't equal to the placement, so it's not going to run that. We get down to the end. The guess is within the range, but it's not equal to the placement, so it makes the grid an X where we guess. So we guessed number 1, and it turned that value, that integer number 1, into a string X. And if we guess 2, you can see it's going to keep doing that. Each guess that's not correct is going to change the list so that instead of the integer there we get a string x. And we can do that all the way since we know it's hidden at 5. So you can do all the way to 10 and it will x them all out and then when you finally guess the right one, bingo, you found it. So very cool. A little bit more of a complex game than we've seen in the past. We're doing a while loop to continue the game until the correct guess is made. And we've also built in a few scenarios of, well, what if somebody enters the wrong thing? Sometimes when you're building the game, you build it assuming that the player is going to do the right thing. And then as you play around with it yourself, you realize, oh, somebody's going to try to type in letters or somebody's going to try to type in um something ridiculous, right? They're going to try to type in 100 million as a guess, but that's not right. But I think we didn't explore exactly what if somebody types in letters like that. But if they type in letters, what's going to happen is this try is going to fail. This guess equals int guess is not going to work because it can't turn um, these letters, L, K, J, H, into an integer. And so it's going to fail and come down to this except code and print out your guess must be a number between 1 and 10 and then you entered um, the guess. Um, so if we wanted to run the game for real we'd get rid of those because we don't want people to actually see the see where it's hidden. So let's try it just plain one, two, three. You can see every guess I'm every guess I'm making it's turning those into X's four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, oh it's ten. 10. Okay, well, then we found it. Alright, so kind of cool. New stuff. The while loop, the try and accept, and then these if statements to check uh, conditions when the game is over and 
um, what to do when it's not over. You want the game to continue, but you want to update the information for the user. So a lot of cool stuff. Play around with it. Obviously, you can change the text if you want to say, you know, what is hidden. If you want to give more detailed feedback or change this to something silly like, um, you know, why why did you guess something that's not between one and ten? That's not right. Um, you know, you can change the text, uh, the feedback to whatever, whatever you want. Um, so have fun. Uh, if you come up with a cool version or a um, uh, an interesting expansion to the game or something new, you can email me the code at info at codezing.org or post it through the website. We'll take a look. If, if you've built a cool new game, then we'll post it online and give you full credit and everybody can see all the hard work you've been doing and the cool games you've built. Um, but have fun playing around with it. And if you have any questions, you can add it to the comments under the video or you can email me questions as well. So have fun with it.